In the past year, I found myself changing the channel, switching to a different station, moving on to another article. On my social media thread, I scrolled through the stories of race-based hate crimes, children separated from their families at the border, and mass shootings, just to name a few. I turned the page and scrolled on through, because it's so much. So I just turned it off. While I may not want that to bother me right now, it doesn't remove the reality that it is all around me. Just because I changed the channel doesn't make the coronavirus disappear. Turning to a different radio station doesn't remove the frustration of a broken justice system unwilling to fix itself. Scrolling to the next feed on my phone doesn't, rem doesn't make the distress experienced because of exclusionary church statements any less harmful. When I choose to put the newspaper down, racism doesn't just suddenly disappear and go away. Perhaps it's because I'm tired, tired of being bombarded by the news that upsets me, that this is the state of our country, the country in which I was born, where I live and I call home. Possibly it's because I don't know what to do with my emotions of sadness, frustration, and anger when I see a child of God suffering at the hands of another fellow human being. I'm just a spectator, an onlooker. And maybe because I'm frustrated with myself and my inability to do much. But I can't stop thinking, can't stop thinking about my fellow Asian and Pacific Islanders being harassed in the streets, or even friends of mine. I can't stop thinking about the people who were gunned down at places where they work. I can't change my color of my skin or the shape of my eyes. So I think back at the moments of my life when I felt that I had, the, I had to change the way I dress, rethink where I go, what time of day I wander out, or how I move about. I think back to when I moved to the mainland and made a conscious effort to relearn English, to sound less like my own family and more like the people in the media. All this so I would make myself less of a target in order to fit into a sanitized social standard. And I can't stop hearing the haunting, struggling voice of George Floyd saying, I can't breathe. When I read of this in the paper and when I watch this on the TV or when I see this on my phone, I can't help but think about friends of mine who have been targeted simply because of who they are. Being a brown-skinned Filipino-American from Hawaii, I can't help but imagine myself in their place. It's too much to think that I too could be next. But just because I choose not to think that I could be next doesn't change the fact that in this country, in this century, this is reality. In the beginning of Jesus' public ministry, he went up to the mountain to preach. We hear in the fifth chapter of Matthew, Jesus taught his disciples, blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Jesus introduced a way of living in the kingdom of God. And at the end of his life, Jesus on the cross said, I thirst. Jesus opened his ministry asking people to hunger and thirst for justice and ended up on the cross, thirsty, dying, victimized for an injustice. Jesus taught us to thirst for justice. And while in my frustration and impatience, I thirst for justice, but it is not the only thing I thirst for. I also thirst for the other Beatitudes. I thirst for mercy that the cycle of hate between people will be broken. I thirst to bring comfort to the families of victims and that the memories of their persecuted loved ones will be honored. I thirst for the meekness that I may listen well with a compassionate heart to the needs of my community. I thirst for purity of heart so that I can see God in someone that is not like me. I thirst to be a peacemaker that doesn't simply bring about an absence of violence, but one that is willing to do the hard work of reconciliation, that cultivates a peace that is rooted deep within ourselves. I thirst for courage to endure the long and uneasy road toward righteousness. I thirst for a humble spirit to know that I myself can't do, any, to do everything and taking comfort in knowing that I am not alone. I turn the page, change the channel, switch the station, 
scroll on through because it is not enough for me to be a bystander. I am unsatisfied with being an onlooker. My thirst calls me to stop being an observer while the kingdom is being built. My thirst calls me out of my spectator role to being a co-worker in God's vineyard. When we thirst, God thirsts too. Today, the day that Jesus died on the cross, is a door opened onto us to the promise of justice that Jesus made in the Beatitudes. Jesus thirsts so that one day, no one will ever again say, I can't breathe.